In the previous video, we motivated some high-definite programming by a toy geometry problem. Today, we will see a much more useful and much more realistic application of some high-definite programming to a different problem related this time to dynamical systems. An important question in dynamical system theory is to test whether a given dynamical system is asymptotically stable, or intuitively, whether it always converges to the equilibrium. This is an extremely important concept in engineering. For example, let's say we model a plane as a dynamical system. If there is turbulence, we would really like to know whether the plane would go back to its equilibrium state, or whether it will do something crazy. In mathematics, we like to model the state of a system at time t by a vector ut, that represents, for example, the position and orientation of the plane. At time t plus 1, the system will reach another state, ut plus 1, that is related to the current state by some function f. The most common and best studied functions f are definitely the linear ones, where f of u is equal to some matrix A times u. In this linear setting, asymptotic stability means that if you start from some initial state u0, and you keep multiplying by the same matrix A again and again, the trajectory converges to the origin eventually and that for any initial state u0. If you pause for a moment and try to think about how you would decide something like this, how would you decide whether a given linear dynamical system is stable or not, two difficulties that have to do with infinity will arise. First, to show convergence of this sequence, we need to consider infinitely many time steps t, and second, we need to consider all possible starting states u0. It makes you wonder if there is even an algorithm that takes the matrix A as input and returns in finite time whether the associated dynamical system is stable or not. We will show today that yes, such an algorithm exists and amazingly is based on a clever application of semi-definite programming. The idea of this algorithm originated from the Russian mathematician Alexander Lyapunov. His observation is as follows. Imagine there is a function v that is positive everywhere except at the origin where it's zero, such that its value decreases after each step of our dynamical system. If such a function exists, then all trajectories must converge to the origin. Intuitively, this is because if some trajectory did not converge to zero, v of u of t will decrease indefinitely, and eventually it will become negative, which cannot happen because v is not negative by definition. Such a function v is called a Lyapunov function, and you can think of it as some energy associated with the system that decreases along trajectories. The great thing about this idea of Lyapunov is that it is an if and only if statement. A linear dynamical system is asymptotically stable if and only if there exists a Lyapunov function. This is great and all, but how is this helpful? It's true that we have reduced the problem of testing stability to testing whether a Lyapunov function exists or not. But practically, how do we find such a Lyapunov function in the first place? If anything, maybe finding such a function is a much harder task than solving the problem we started with. And this is where the time we spent on semi-definite programming will pay off, so bear with me for a second. To search for Lyapunov function v, we need two insights. First, we will assume that v is as simple as possible, but not any simpler than that. For example, we cannot take v itself to be a linear function, because linear functions take negative values. We can try quadratic functions though, or in other words, functions of the form u transpose pu for some matrix p. The second insight is that the task of searching for a quadratic function v that satisfies Lyapunov requirements is a semi-definite programming in disguise. To see that, note that the constraint v of 0 equals 0 is automatically satisfied, the positivity constraint is exactly the same as the matrix p being positive definite, and the constraint v of ut plus 1 smaller than v of u of t is the same as a times u times p times a times u is smaller than u p times u. Or in other terms, after a slight rearrangement, it's the same as the matrix P minus A transpose PA being positive definite. And that's it. As written, this is almost a semi-definite program. We are looking for a matrix P that satisfies a bunch of matrix inequalities. I say almost because so far there is no objective function and the inequalities are strict. But semi-definite programming only supports non-strict inequalities. As far as picking an objective function is concerned, you can pick any function you want. For example, even the constant function zero would work here. How about the strict inequalities? Well, it turns out that this is not a big issue either. Without loss of generality, and by scaling this matrix P with a large positive scalar if necessary, we can replace the strict inequalities with larger or equal than the identity matrix. Which is another way of saying that after subtracting the identity, we want the resulting matrix to be positive semi-definite. Let's now jump to Python and see how we can do this. So we have our matrix A that gives the linear dynamical system ut plus 1 equals A times ut. 
And just for fun, we can use this code to generate a sample trajectory from this dynamical system. You can see that this particular trajectory converges to zero, but in order to show that all trajectories converge to zero, we need to find a Lyapunov function. So let's look for a Lyapunov function of the form u transpose pu with semi-definite programming. As usual, we import the package cbxpy, we declare a matrix p to which we impose the Lyapunov constraints we talked about, and we call the solve method. And just like that, we obtain the following Lyapunov function, which shows that our dynamical system is indeed asymptotically stable. If you run the exact same code with a different matrix A, like this one for example, the solver will tell you that the semi-definite program is infeasible, which shows that the corresponding dynamical system is not stable. And this is something you might have guessed by looking at this sample trajectory for example. That's all for today, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and see you next time.